what we have here today is a permanent magnet motor. And this one is a 24 volt, 120 watts. So it's only a, a small motor, to be fair. But, you see, these things can be used as generators. A permanent magnet synchronous generator, which is basically a generator where the excitation field is provided by a permanent magnet instead of a coil. Now, most motors these days have a series of coils surrounding the armature, which is also a set of windings. But you see, the term synchronous refers here to the fact that the rotor and the magnetic field, well, it rotates at the same speed, you see. Yeah, because the magnetic field is generated through a shaft-mounted permanent magnet mechanism. And the current is uh, induced into the stationary armature. Well, shall we have a look and see what voltage we can get out of this little generator? I think we should. So, let's turn on the old uh, multimeter here. All right? And we've got our two probes here, which we're going to push into the spade connectors. The red's obviously positive, so let's... Oh, uh, well... Oh, jab it with the probe. Yes, it's been probed. Ooh. Okay, we've probed that. And now we need to probe it with the neutral. Let me do it, yeah. Okay, there we are. Switch in the neutral and all that. There we go. So, we now have the positive and negative connected to the positive and ne negative of this particular motor. Now, if I spin this, right, something should happen here. All right? We should see some voltage. Now, if I go anti-clockwise... As you can see, I'm getting a negative result. I've reversed the polarity of this particular motor. But if I go clockwise, I get a positive. So the positive becomes positive. Do you understand what I mean? Whereas if I'm going anti-clockwise, the negative becomes a positive, and the positive becomes a negative. Oh my god, yeah, it's all confusing. But obviously, don't expect it to be a huge amount of voltage appearing on this screen, because I'm twisting it by hand. Well... This particular little motor could be used to easily charge a 12 volt well, a car battery or something like that. You know, a deep cycle battery. Because although it says 24 volts DC, that would be its maximum output from, or its recommended output from this particular little uh, permanent magnet machine or motor. And, you know, when you consider 14 volts is quite acceptable uh, charge voltage for a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Uh, the voltage you're going to be getting out of this particular motor all depends on how fast you can make this thing spin. Now, you can actually regulate this in a wind turbine by altering the pitch of the blades. Now, the pitch of the blades themselves will have a maximum uh, recommended, or not recommended, maximum potential uh, thrust and rotation until they start fluttering and becoming inefficient and slowing, basically slowing themselves down. Whereas with uh, something like this, you see, you could, if you wanted to, put some kind of resist. You can reduce the amount of voltage allowed through these two connectors, so you can regulate the voltage. But um, the, the idea to charge two batteries up on a 24-volt uh, generator like this one is slim you'd be able to charge a 12 volt battery with with not too much trouble now the thing about anything like this you need revolutions so you to get this spinning fast enough ideally instead of just putting a, a a set of blades on the end of this motor if you would consider making it into a wind turbine in this case only be a small one because it's only 120 watts but it's still power you still charge batteries uh, you might be better off gearing something like this with a toothed belt. Since it's already got a toothed belt on there, you might as well do so. And maybe with a 400mm to 600mm diameter, well, no, 600mm diameter um, set of blades would be enough on something like this. Now, I have another motor similar to this one, much, much bigger. And it can quite easily accept. It's literally a uh, motor from a treadmill similar sort of arrangement to this but i've managed to directly mount my blades to it without any gearing whatsoever and it does perform as a wind turbine and it can charge two batteries because the voltage is higher you see 
So there you go. This is a well, permanent magnet uh, machine or motor or a permanent magnet synchronous generator. And it's pretty darn cool if you ask me. You see. Now you're going to say to me, okay, what, why is the magnets on the armature instead of the actual the coils? Now the reason for that is because the moving part, which is that, is much, much easier to construct without any kind of brushes or anything like that. Because the coils, you see, are on the outside and the coils are fixed. It just works, you know. Simples. Whereas an ordinary electric motor would generally be the other way around. And it will, you would have a set of brushes on the, on the actual uh, armature itself, or the uh, stator. So there you go. That is a permanent magnet motor. I'm going to play with this, Dad. Watch it. How fast can I make it go? Oh, I don't, no, not that fast. Where's my, where's my battery drill? Would that fit? Uh, I've got one over here. Sure, it's now, although it's only a little, bad little belt. I don't know if I'm about to get that on there, actually. What, can I get it? Just on the end? Oh, I might be able to. Right. It's, it's got clockwise. Oh. <laughs> Nearly there. Right, let's try it. Push it on there. 8 volts. Doing it to, oh, 7 to 8 volts using this little battery drill. And it's only, all, it's only a small battery drill, which the RPMs are. Oh, one thousand, oh sorry, 1,500, I believe. The 4,000 RPM maximum. Which I don't think we're getting that. So you would need to gear this. So there you go, anyway. Okay, we had to play. Time for me to go. So I'll say toodaloo, you know. So, why don't you play, have a bit of a play with some, well, electric motors and see whether they're PM, PMMs or if they're, uh, well, if they've got an actual field coil. Hmm? As well as a armature with a coil. Yeah? Okay. Toodaloo.